at you now. Eric Bowling and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. A Fox News alert just a short while ago, President Obama gave his first remarks on the new book out tomorrow by former Defense Secretary Robert Gates. We're going to play that for you in just a moment. But first, Gates gave his first TV interviews on the controversial memoir today. One of the things he wrote about was the president's commitment to the Afghan war, and he had a chance to elaborate on that. It's one thing to tell the troops that you support them. It's another to, to work at making them believe that you believe, as president, that their sacrifice is worth it, that the cause is just. President Bush did that with the troops uh, when I was secretary. I did not see President Obama do that. And President Obama had a chance to respond to some of the comments in the book. Secretary Gates did an outstanding job for me as Secretary of Defense, uh, as he notes. Uh, he and I and the rest of my national security team came up with a strategy for Afghanistan that was the right strategy and we are continuing to execute. Uh, and I think that uh, what's important is that we got the policy right. Whenever you've got men and women uh, that you are sending into harm's way uh, after having already made enormous investments of blood and treasure uh, in another country. Uh, then uh, part of your job as Commander-in-Chief is to, is to sweat the details on it. War is never easy. And I think that all of us who have been involved in that process understand that. Okay, he had a lot more to say, and there's a lot more that's coming out about this book. We fir first got a glimpse of it last week, Kimberly, when there were just little snippets that were released. Sure. Now the book will actually be on sale tomorrow, and both Gates and uh, President Obama have been able to comment, amongst many other people. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask is that Robert Gates for a long time has always been praised for being very blunt and very candid. Do you think that people in official Washington, uh, mainstream media, even in the administration, still think that those two qualities are a virtue? I'm sure they find them greatly in disfavor at this particular <laughs> moment. But I would add courageous to that because it's not a, a place where people are likely to speak their mind and say something in a true way with conviction and passion and back it up and not just say it once but put it in a book and then repeat it in interviews. I think he has seen a very marked difference between the administrations of Bush and Obama and I think one of the reasons that we've seen such a large number of casualties in Afghanistan since President Obama has taken over is because of the rules of engagement. That's the only thing getting executed now are U.S troops being put in harm's way by the tactics employed by this administration. Let me ask yeah. you about that, Eric, because one of the things President Obama just said is that the, the important thing is, is that they got the policy right. Um, do you think that actually the troops on the ground think that the, we're getting the policy right when Fallujah is in, in danger of returning to al-Qaeda's hands? I'm not sure, and I, I think the, the revelations in the book are basically tell the troops on the ground they're not sure about the policy, but now he's going to backtrack and say we got the policy right. Look. The soundbite we heard President Obama talking about the, the r things we've learned from the book, he never refutes anything he, he heard. He simply says, we did what we wanted to do, we executed the policy we felt was right, and we will continue to do that. To his credit, you know, he's standing firm on that. Um, but Gates points something out in the book, and I can't wait till we get more. We get, what, 60 pages or so out? We Snippets. Got, yeah, another 500 pages or so. Um, Gates points something out, that the president, th th there's at least some question as to how confident and uh, capable the president is in making decisions when it, when it comes to war. Now, Gates himself is a warrior. He's a soldier. He says, I answer to the president, the president makes the right calls. That's what a good soldier does. He doesn't question authority above him, but he certainly does when he leaves and he, say, you know, when he has to look back and say, you know, I'm writing my memoir now. I have to let people know exactly where, how I felt. I think Gates did a nice job re releasing all that information. On balance, Bob, and reading through, for example, the Steve Inskeep interview on NPR today, I think Secretary Gates goes out of his way to say that he does think President Obama made good decisions. He does question, however, the political involvement of the staff. And one of the key elements in particular was a question about National Security Council staff actually going outside the chain of command and contacting combatant commanders on the ground. Unheard of. Mm. No, it is right? unheard of. Yeah, and I, I can understand why Gates would be upset with that. I want to keep in mind, though, that he did say repeatedly that Obama made the right decisions, and virtually every foreign policy decision, national security decision, he said he made the right decisions. Now, to comparison to Bush, Bush is a warrior president. 
Obama, you cannot suggest that about him. He was against the Iraq war to begin well, with. President, uh, President Bush didn't want to be a war president. No I, no, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that Obama may have had second thoughts about uh, the decision and the rest of it, but he never did anything that in any, and in terms about the terms of engagement, that came from the military. It did not come from President Obama. It's not President He's Obama's He's the commander-in-chief no, of but, the military. But, but, they, but it, it came out of the Joint Chiefs, and they wanted to do it that way at the request of the Afghani government. Now, you know, you can argue, you can't lay that one at the feet of this Obama. This is his presidency, though. I, well, he needs but, to own it and take responsibility if, for decisions. If the Joint actually. Chiefs say that the Afghanis want a change in how you engage, then it's very difficult to say we're going to do it differently. I mean, it, let me get, uh, it's get, complicated. Let me get Greg in here after, if I could play a soundbite, because one of the no. things Gates talks about in the book is that how he hates partisanship in Washington, right. D.C., and that he thinks that part of the rollout of this book has actually been fairly partisan. Hmm. The book has sort of been hijacked by people on, along the political spectrum to serve their own purposes, taking quotes out of context and so on. And it's sort of part of the political warfare in Washington that I decry in the book. Do you think that he actually, <laughs> that the book has been successful so far because of those tactics and about the partisanship? Yeah. Why are you laughing? <laughs> It's hard not to say something. <laughs> he has, he's, he's wearing a, a necklace. He is a great man. He just looks like a golf ball being teed up. <laughs> oh, my God. He's adorable, adorable. But I hope he gets better. No, you know what? Um, he's basically saying that the media is using the book to serve a purpose. Right. However, it, he sold you a box of firecrackers, and now he's condemning you for setting them off. Right. The book is filled with these nuggets that were highlighted to be used in such a manner uh, and it's selling books, so he should be grateful, and he should also understand that that's how a book is used. But again, I'm going to go back. I want to go back to what Bob said, and I agree with. No one should ever be surprised by President Obama's behavior. We weren't electing Patton. Obama has more in common with Macaulay Culkin than MacArthur. What bothered me about the one of the excerpts like that. was there was a certain kind of snotty defensiveness in the book about a perceived lack of trust by. Uh, the military that Obama felt that they don't trust him because of his inexperience. But what do you expect when you hang out with anti-Western radicals all your life operating under the assumption that the U.S. is this evil Goliath? Uh, don't expect troops to rally behind you when for years, for years, you hung out with people who hated the troops. Well, so. let me get Kimberly on this because uh, to that very point, uh, Gates addresses his criticisms of Vice President Biden. Who he, Gates is saying that he kind of was feeding President Obama this, this line about the military uh, boxing President Obama in. Listen to this. Where I had a particular problem with the Vice President was in his encouragement of suspicion of the military and the senior military with the president. You can't trust these guys. They're going to try and jam you. They're going to try and box you in and so on. And that, that did disturb me a lot. What do you make of that, Kimberly? Because he did also say today in subsequent interviews that when asked about the vice president and whether he thought he would make a good president, he said, well, on balance, I guess I have to say yes. Well, I think he's a fair and balanced kind of guy but I mean if you read the message okay the headline you don't bury the lead it's that he does not feel that he's highly competent he may like him personally and say he's not a bad guy but he's been wrong on nearly every single foreign policy issue is that who you want to elect well yeah, let's let's keep that's in mind the, that's the message the, the other thing he was unequivocal about was that Hillary Clinton would make a good president that's one thing that I think was been lost in, in a lot of this number one he got along with her very well Biden spent 35 years in the Congress, which has always had an adversarial relationship with, the, with the uniform military. And I like the fact that we've, we've glossed over this, but Gates took Congress on in no uncertain terms, and he was exactly right. The only thing I wish, you remember when he said he had that dream, he'd like to stand up and say, screw it. I'm not going to take this from you guys anymore. I'm out of here. I only wish he'd done it. It is kind of the right. job of a cabinet secretary, though, to sit there and take the oversight of the, of yeah, the Congress. Yeah. I want to get, ask um, Eric a question based on something you said on Friday, which was a question of the timing of the book mm -hmm. and also that why did he stay so long as Secretary of State of Defense if he had these problems. And he, in the interview with Steve Inskeep on NPR this morning, he says that basically he became so caught up emotionally with the troops and that every night uh, for Every single evening for four and a half years, I, he would write these letters to the families of the fallen, and he said that he didn't tell anybody about it, that he was kept it very private, and that there wasn't a single evening in four and a half years when he did not weep. Um, 
do you think that is a sign of, that we need to rethink any sort of troop decisions or strain on the troops or what we're asking our military to do uh, when you have somebody like Secretary Gates, who's not a stranger to adversity, but basically weeping every night over the war? I'm not sure that, that we should change our strategy. I, I do think it, it shows a side of Gates that maybe people didn't realize. He's always been known as a straightforward kind of guy, a tough guy, um, you know, with, with tremendous resolve. And then you hear things like this, which, frankly, I didn't even know until you read that, that he was weeping, writing letters home to, to people's families, which I would think that most people would be. However, regarding what I said on Friday, the question, questioning the timing of it, he did clarify that, I think, today or yesterday when he said, I felt it difficult to think that I was going to wait till 2017 to get the information out that I, that you know that he had, he didn't want to wait, sit down for another three years, which Good makes a lot of sense. It also highlights what I had said earlier in the block that he's a hero, he's a war, he's a a soldier. Mm -hmm. A soldier doesn't take down his commanding officer or all the way up or anywhere down the channel when you're in battle. He, in we're at war. We're do still you think at war. That, let me get, he's admirable for that. Let me get Greg last word here. The, do you think the timing is a concern for President Obama? And one of the questions that Matt Lauer asks Gates is, do you think that it's dangerous at this time to question a commander-in-chief? Hmm. I don't know, because I, I, I'm always of the feeling that people hold on to material for a book when they should be letting it out sooner. If you feel that people are in danger, you should come out and say something and sacrifice the couple of million dollars you're going to uh, uh, make out of, the, out of this book. <laughs> but more important, I think the book doesn't just really expose President Obama's uh, innate beliefs about America and its, his anti-exceptionalism. It also exposes the media for its kind of intentional hibernation, that these are things in the last six years that should have been talked about that, that weren't. weren't because it made President Obama look bad. Uh, it, it's a book that is critical of Obama, and of course the media will then implode towards Gates. But, but can I just say one thing before we get out of here? Sure. You know, this book, from, from at least a part of it, I've read every excerpt I can get my hands on. From everything I can see, he is not overly critical of Obama. There are certain pieces here that you could pull out, and they make for interesting discussion, interesting debate, but he has gone out of his way to say over and over again that Obama made the right decisions, and yes, uh, he uh, believed that he may not have had the same kind of instincts about the military, but he certainly was a good commander in chief. And but, I think that's but the something. publicity mm -hmm. tactic of getting said. that out there that's for a week actually worked. I don't disagree, Bob. I'm just saying there's another aspect, another side to that, where he does make a comparison between Bush and President Obama and said that Bush was very genuine and believable when he was motivating troops and saying it's worth it, your sacrifice, all of that. And that's important for a commander in chief, and that's where President Obama fell short on the sale. And then there's that whole chapter that hasn't come out yet where he says that President Obama's a Satanist. <laughs> and and uh, I was absolutely You're shocked, by that. That shocked by that. Shocked by that. Yes, I'm not sure if it's true. I don't know, don't but know. It, I, I'm disturbed. I'm not going to question it, but you guys keep questioning me about those kids getting killed on the George Washington Bridge. I don't know why you <laughs> keep go, questioning yeah. that. All right. The, the, the Gates book, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of controversy, but I also think there's a lot of to chew on here. Um, it's not necessarily about politics, but read. about war. Yeah, and it seems, it and really? it seems well written to me, what I've read so far. I like it. You can't read. <laughs>